tonight on Wings. Take off with the Discovery Channel in the XB-70 Valkyrie. More than a quarter century after its maiden flight, the XB-70 stands as one of aviation's greatest achievements. Designed as a replacement for the Boeing B-52, the XB-70 could travel at three times the speed of sound. Employing technology that was well ahead of its time, the XB-70 is one of the best aircraft designs that never went into production. Tonight, soar high in the XB-70 Valkyrie on wing. This is the XB-70 Valkyrie, a supersonic heavy bomber that featured design innovations decades ahead of the planes of its time. Yet this revolutionary aircraft never went into service because while it was being developed, the strategic picture changed. A decade later, a similar fate almost befell this plane, the B-1 bomber. Apart from modifications to the engine intake, the B-1B seen here looks very similar to its controversial predecessor, the B-1A heavy bomber. However, because of the evolution of technology, the B-1B, in many ways, was a very different aircraft. Like the XB-70, the B-1A was designed to replace the B-52 as the Strategic Air Command's high-altitude heavy bomber. However, due to political conflicts and technical problems, the project was canceled. But the B-1 didn't die. Over the next several years, the U.S. Air Force and Rockwell, the plane's manufacturer, revised the aircraft's parameters. Taking full advantage of the aircraft's swing-wing potential, Rockwell redesigned the plane for the long-range, low-level mission. The plane was outfitted with the latest detection evasion electronics. But the major difference between the B-1A and the B-1B is simply that the later model, although the product of considerable technical innovation and years of additional development, was actually made to be slower than its predecessor. Radar jamming and stealth technology have changed the specifications for strategic bombing aircraft. But this is a relatively new development. For much of the century, the military constantly sought faster and faster planes. Probably the biggest single step forward in the search for new technology to gain higher speed came with the advent of the jet engine. Although pre-war Germany first utilized jet power, American engineers also tested the concept on experimental aircraft before the war's end, with aircraft like Bell's Aero Comet. The first major development of the post-war years was the record-breaking Bell X-1 rocket-powered experimental aircraft. Dropped from a Second World War bomber on December 9, 1946, in the hands of test pilot Chuck Yeager, the X-1 broke the sound barrier for the first time. Further development produced the X-2, which flew faster and higher than its predecessor. The quest for higher speed put phenomenal stress not only on aircraft, but also on their pilots. The risk of even a minor malfunction at the speeds now being attempted was enormous.
Much of the data gathered by the X airplane tests was used for military objectives. Faster aircraft would be harder targets to hit. Some of the lessons learned from the X airplane program were applied to American fighters and bombers. With the Cold War on, stretching the boundaries of speed and distance had become a matter of national security. By the mid-50s, the Strategic Air Command, known as SAC, was deploying its first all-jet long-range heavy bomber, Boeing's B-52 Stratofortress. A giant plane with eight jet engines suspended below fully swept wings, the B-52 could fly at speeds of 600 miles per hour with a large payload. But although the B-52 was one of the major successes of post-war aviation, it was not supersonic. The next step in the quest to increase the speed of bomber aircraft came with the B-58 Hustler. This Delta Wing was developed by Convair to produce a bomber aircraft which could actually fly at and sustain supersonic speeds. But to attain this performance, the plane had to be relatively small and could only be classed as a medium bomber. During the early 1950s, when Soviet-American tensions ran high, SAC wanted a bomber at least as large as the B-52, but faster than the Hustler. This was a very tall order for engineers to meet. Taking a heavy bomber past the sound barrier required a phenomenal power source. Temporarily discarding normal jet power as inadequate, aviation companies look towards two alternatives. The first was nuclear power, used successfully to propel submarines. Convair converted a conventional B-36, not unlike this one, to carry aloft a fully commissioned nuclear reactor. The crewmen were insulated by lead shielding, and although no attempt at this stage was made to transfer power to propel the aircraft, tests were carried out in earnest. Various designs were put forward for bombers which would at least in part be nuclear powered. However, the biggest problem here was the ramifications of a nuclear powered plane crashing in a populated area. Another proposal to boost power would be equipping bombers with external tanks of fast burning zip fuel, such as boron. Prior to the plane making its final dash to its target, the enormous fuel tanks would be dropped, lightening the aircraft for the attack. But an ingenious solution to the problem came from North American Aviation. The company had refined the concept of compression lift. Their plan called for mounting six enormous jet engines in a tapered shape under the aircraft, thus forcing air away from the center section at high speed. The design also allowed for this air to be trapped by the outer edge.